Ecco cos'è la nostra prima predica della Divina Provvidenza. When we enter the school of life, there is a teaching that begins to unfold and blossom in our understanding, that of God's providence. With profound eloquence, Mother Elvira told us the story of a beautiful woman with a serene and luminous countenance, Lady Providence, the maternity of God. She rises early before anyone else and sets to work, tenderly caring for we who are her children. She works late into the night, and we rest in the knowledge that we are loved and well cared for. A miraculous wonder, she dances throughout the entire day on a perpetual quest to bridge gaps and lead us closer to the Father. When we open our hearts to the movement of the Holy Spirit, Lady Providence lovingly guides us. She brings us through the waiting, the trials, and the sufferings to the right people, places, and conversations. In this, we come to know God's great love for us. No one goes unseen. She is fearless. She is brave. She is willing to go to any length to complete her mission. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, what's up? I'm Lorenzo. What's up? I'll show you around. I'll be your guardian angel, and we can unpack your stuff. Actually, I don't have any stuff. Hey, no, no worries. We have Providence. Providence, what's that? We do not ask for what we need. Rather, we pray for God's providence, and then we trust that our needs will be met. Each item comes as a gift. With such abundance and consistency, it is apparent that the daily miracle of sustainability comes from the Father. Mother Elvira felt strongly that young people have the right to see God, to touch Him and experience Him, not only to hear about Him from those who believe. There are also moments when the houses lack certain things such as milk or sugar. This too is providence. In our past, we considered things indispensable. Going without these things offers the discovery that the joy in your heart doesn't rely on material riches. Entitlement is replaced with gratitude. Hey, try these on. All right. Hey, you look great. Thanks, man. You ready to go check out the wood shop? Yeah, let's do it. A monumental teaching that Mother Elvira has offered the men and women of community is the notion that our hands are our very first providence. Our hands allow us to work. So many men and women enter community never having learned a trade, living in laziness on the streets. Their work was to steal, deal drugs, and fight to survive. The reality of work, which occupies much of the day in community, is fundamental for rebuilding the interior life. We regain trust in ourselves after realizing our capacity to sacrifice, to commit, and be consistent. We come to realize that we are enriched, not only by what we do, but by how we do it. Oh wow, did you guys make all this? Yeah, these were made by the men and women of community. Did you paint this? Yeah, I did. It's beautiful. You must have painted before you come to community. Yeah, some something like that.
provides for us in the form of passions and talents. In our selfishness, we use these gifts as a means to glorify ourselves. True joy is found when one realizes the purpose of their gifts and resolves to use them to love. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you. Here's some extra money so you can buy more supplies. Oh, thank you. Actually, all the money that we receive goes to the children to provide for them in the mission. In all of these years, we have never gone to a supermarket to buy pasta, oil, or flour. Everything comes to us, often arriving in abundance. Oftentimes, God provides so abundantly that we have enough to share with others. We are blessed not only to receive, but also find moments to be instruments of His providence, a gift that keeps giving. Yeah, but this is the nursery. Uh, we spent a lot of time and effort into this. Man, this is cool. Y'all have y'all have a lot of stuff. It seems like you could sell a lot of it and make some money. Ah, uh, that's not how community works. Mother Elvira had the great intuition to completely trust in God. He never goes into retirement, and in his bank, we have an inexhaustible account. Thus, from the beginning, the community chose not to accept financial support from the government and never asks families to pay a fee. We are meant to love, to be providence in others' lives. In our past, we did not choose to be gifts for those around us. Our gaze was fixed inward. We were enslaved to self-consumption. We missed the providence of the person in front of us. It is a wonderful discovery to come to know the beauty and fulfillment of putting ourselves at the service of others. Life becomes meaningful when we see and accept the joy others can offer us. Hey man, looks like you're having a rough day, you okay? It's nothing man, it's, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. You wanna, you wanna meet up after, after we're done eating? Sure. Absolutely. In community, the men and women frequently experience trials. However, with an open heart, one can choose to trust in the providence of the Father's guidance in these moments as an opportunity to heal or be transformed. Sometimes they find themselves facing difficult situations humanly impossible to resolve. But the providence of the Holy Spirit's strength helps them to remember that it is enough just to pass through the door that God opens for them. Every day they see the miracles. The providence of suffering is a gift that if acknowledged may lead to the Father. Obrigado, Senhor Jesus, pela missão em minha vida. Porque todo o passado que eu tive quando era criança abandonado, sem pai, sem mãe, por todas essas feridas que tinha quando era criança. Graças a esta missão, está sendo uma grande providência para mim. Jesus, você me devolveu a esperança, me deu uma família que me deu amor, carinho, que me educou e fizeram de tudo para que eu possa ser um homem bom. Você me tirou de um caminho de trevas e me colocou em um caminho de plena luz e alegria. Fear, silence, loneliness, and timidity are replaced with a great desire to love. We realize that if we truly want to be happy, we have to learn how to love at all costs. The opportunity each day to sacrifice prepares our hearts to be the mothers and fathers He intends us to be. Hey, JC, you're just who I'm looking for. 
Hey man, you gotta share your testimony at the shrine today. You want me to share my testimony? You think my testimony is gonna make a difference in someone's life? Okay, if you touch one life, that's all that matters. Good evening. My name is John Christopher, and this is the story of how my past led me to surrender to God. In a time of desperation, when we accept that we are not in control and have nothing left to do but surrender, God can begin to act in our lives. Being brought to our knees can be a catalyst for change, a gift from the Father to lead us back to Him. And I realize that no one's gonna pave this road for me. I need to take responsibility for my own life. And that's when I said yes to community. It is beautiful to see that we, who have built our homes on the sand of false idols, which pushed us down the road of drugs, can testify today about our new lives and help many people regain hope. Our personal testimonies proclaim the light of salvation from the darkness of our past. When we share the light with others, the light increases in our own lives. Our hearts are healed and we are set free. It is kneeling before the Eucharist in silent and personal adoration that many young people throughout the years of community have changed their lives and encountered the living Jesus. Adoration. Have a living experience that God, if you give him a chance, knows how to be a very good father. E al Signore ho lanciato questa sfida. Tu sei padre e io ti ho incontrato con la tua splendida paternità. Allora ho detto io vado dove tu vuoi, faccio quello che vuoi. La, la tua volontà in qualsiasi momento me la riveli. E però tu devi essere padre e così è stato, non ci ha mai delusi, non ci ha mai delusi.